Okay, so we're going to talk about some of the equipment load for the uh, the rest of the team. So far, we've talked about the lead man and the officer. Now we're going to talk about the searchers that are behind him, whether it's one guy or two. This is our rip bag. It's our air supply for our victim. It's obviously a very important piece. In here is an hour bottle. These bags come in some different configurations. This is kind of the original RIT bag that came out that a lot of departments use, uh, but they're all essentially set up the same way. Uh, there's a bag for the bottle, um, some room for some accessories on some of them, and that's kind of the difference between the bags is, is what else is in the bag uh, besides the actual air supply. But obviously the most important part is that air supply and, and how we can deliver that to a victim if we need to in the structure. So uh, you have your bottle in here. Obviously when we get to a victim, we're gonna turn the bottle on. And then in this bottom pouch, we open this up and there are two lines that are directly attached to the bottle. One is just like on our SCBA, comes up to a regulator and we have an extra face piece in here. The other one is a transfill line so that we can equalize the bottles and, and get that guy some air. So when we're talking about our RIT air supplies, it's important to note a few differences uh, in options that you, that you have on these packs. In a pack like this, your options are, if you're not going to swap face pieces, your option is to transfill the victim's bottle uh, and equalize those pressures and then disconnect this from that victim's bottle. So there are some other manufacturers that give you the option of performing that same operation or setting this up and hooking it up to the victim in a buddy breather configuration. Uh, there's some pluses and minuses to both, but overall, transfilling allows you to disconnect the air supply from the victim and have it available to the rest of the team should they need it at some other point in the operation. Where if you're using that buddy breather system, you have to leave the air supply connected to that victim as he's breathing directly off of that bottle uh, and, and again, that takes away the option for you to use that air supply if you need it uh, for one of the team members or for anybody else besides that initial victim. Uh, we need to do a quick assessment. When we get to our victim, uh, we need to look at that and we need to take a, a, a hard look at him and see, is he breathing? If he's not breathing, we shouldn't waste time with this operation because putting air in his bottle is not going to make him breathe again. At that point, he needs taken out of the building and he needs uh, medical care at that point more than he needs this. If he is breathing, uh, probably the better option it, for us is going to be to use the transfill line. There's a lot of variables involved when you go to swap out a face piece in an IDLH environment. Uh, it, there's, there's a lot of things to think about and in a high stress environment with potential heat and smoke conditions, uh, the transfill line is going to be more of a surefire way to uh, get that guy the air he needs and do it mistake free without causing any further harm to him. So like I said, there's, there's some different configurations of these bags. Uh, there's some pouches here on the sides where you can put whatever you deem necessary. We like to think about putting cable cutters in there. Uh, wedges are always a good option. A piece of webbing to have. Uh, we like to see each guy carrying his own webbing, but if, if uh, it's not a bad idea to put an extra piece in here so that you make sure that it's there when you need it. Uh, so those are some things you can think about when you're looking at these bags. Next thing we're going to talk about are our tag lines that we're going to use for our searchers to search off of that main line like we had talked about. Uh, these are from RIT Rescue Systems and these are 20 foot retractable tag lines. So the idea here is each searcher is going to take one of these tag lines, attach it to his person, usually on the belt of his SCBA with this carabiner, and then use the other end of it to attach to the main line when he's going to go off into an area to search, whether that's an open area or a segmented area like an office space. Um, some things to think about with this uh, that play into, uh, again, talking about that officer with the tick is even though we're on retractable tag lines as we're searching, if we're able to, we still want that officer to guide that search with the tick if he's in a position to do so. We'll talk some more about that later. This is the Rescue Products Tracer Line. Uh, it's another um, option for a retractable search line. And this one is a little bit different configuration. There's a detent button there to let the, the module out that is going to get attached to your main line. 
Now you can see that the line that this one uses is two millimeter Kevlar and there are there's 60 feet of search line in this housing. So you can obviously go go a lot further on this search line than than some of the other ones. Some things to note about this are uh, the indicator lights on each end of it. The module that gets attached to the search line has a set of lights on it. The housing itself has another set of lights on it. Each individual light is going to indicate 10 feet. So for your first 10 feet out, you have one solid green light. From 10 to 20, you have two solid green lights, and 20 to 30, you have three. Once you get past 30 feet, the lights will go back to one, but it will be blinking. And from there, for each 10 feet, you have one blinking light. So when you are played completely out, you will have three blinking lights. So this is just another option for a retractable search line off of your main line. All right, so Brennan covered the basic equipment options and responsibilities of those subsequent search team members. We're going to call them search team three and search team four. Um, that three man and that four man can stagger that gear or load that gear between the two of them in whatever application they want. The reason those equipment loads are, are versatile between those two individuals is because when we get into the actual search operation, those two individuals are going to trade places with some consistency to make sure that we're equally loading um, them with workload uh, as well as uh, air capacity. We want to make sure that they're both kind of doing the same volume of work. Um, so now we've got this gear on them. We're going to use that same configuration with our bottle attachments and our seatbelt connectors uh, oriented the exact same way as we do with that primary search bag. Additionally, we want to make sure that we've got at least a set of irons um, and any other additional hand tools that we want to take between those two individuals so that we have the ability to force those doors and do some overhaul and do whatever types of applications we encounter inside the structure. Remember to make this tool load appropriate for the structure you're in. If you're in a class two building, it's got a lot of concrete, a lot of cinder block, it's a really important uh, concept to make sure that you've got a heavy striking tool within that team, whether it's a heavy sledge, a maul, or a really heavy TNT or Denver tool. Um, those are really important additional considerations. And then you want to make sure that each of these guys have a retractable unit or a static search line. It's important to denote that we don't always have to have retractables. If you want to use dedicated indicators um, or, or offset search lines off of that main line, you can use static ropes. What all have you seen, Brandon, as far as options on those static rope applications? Using a static line uh, as a search line works. Uh, it's just it, I've found that uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult to manage. Uh, not so much when you're playing it out, but as you come back to the line, uh, a lot of times if, if that searcher is not really, really diligent about taking that line up in an organized way as he comes back to that main search line, he could end up with either a couple of big loops of rope or just a big pile of rope depending on how long that search line is. And that uh, one, makes his search ineffective, and two, it slows the whole team down as they have to wait for him to reconfigure all that static line into something manageable that he can move down the main line with the rest of the team and continue searching. Yeah, very important. So one of the primary things that we got to really watch with all of these search line applications is entanglement. We can't let them become a pro so problematic for us that they become encumbrances and we're no longer effectively searching. The tools have to be designed to facilitate the search operation. So apply all of this with common sense and know when to cut yourselves loose from the entire operation of the search line components if they're starting to become more of a hazard to the team than they are a benefit. So between search three and search four, just remember that this cash load of equipment, some iron, some heavy striking tools, the red air supply, and retractables on each man need to be in place on searcher three and searcher four.